today we're going to do a walkthrough of Yellowfin and experience the platform through the eyes of a data analyst. And we're going to do that with some interesting healthcare data that we've identified. We've loaded the healthcare data into our database, performed some simple modeling, and we are very quickly ready to start exploring and building content. We began by constructing this life expectancy dashboard to explore a few relevant health indicators. Now, Australia has pretty high life expectancy figures at birth, nearly 85 years old for women and 81 years old for men. It seemed to be above the OECD average and continues to climb over time. So what were the key drivers behind high life expectancy in Australia? We expected this to be correlated to key fiscal measures, so we charted this to explore that possibility. And this is what we found. It's partly driven by two important expenditures, total expenditure on health as a percentage of GDP, and also government expenditure on health as a percentage of total expenditure, both increasing over the last decade. We can also see falling smoking prevalence for both genders since the year 2000. Including increased access to antiretroviral therapy coverage, you can see big upward trends in access to these drugs, so people with HIV are living longer in recent times. But perhaps the most important driver is the survival of babies. For the first 28 days after birth, and from 1 up to 5 years old, you can see falling mortality rates across these indicators. But this is quite standard for a fairly wealthy and advanced nation. We expect these drivers. So we thought, what other indicators could affect life expectancy in Australia? An intriguing indicator is potentially preventable deaths. So we blended this data set and drilled a little deeper into this category for Australia. What are potentially avoidable deaths? The number of deaths each year of people under 75 years old from conditions that are potentially preventable through individualized care and or treatable through existing primary or hospital care. You can see in 2014 alone that we've had 27,000 and 49,000 avoidable deaths for both women and men respectively. While it is decreasing year on year, those are still fairly large figures, especially if they are avoidable. Looking across the states in Australia, we focused on smaller geographical areas known as Statistical Area Level 3, or SA3s. What are SA3s? SA3s are designed to provide a regional breakdown of Australia and in outer regional and remote areas. They represent areas which are widely recognised as having a distinct identity and similar social and economic characteristics. At a high level, the states of New South Wales, Queensland and Victoria are seen to have the highest level totals for avoidable deaths. And most of these deaths seem to be coming from men. I'm really curious about what lies behind these figures, so I'm going to use Assisted Insights here and ask it to explain these figures to me. Yellowfin runs smart algorithms over the data finds the most likely causes and ranks them. It also automatically creates smart visualizations and pairs them with narratives that are easily explained the insights. It is doing in seconds what would usually take a data analyst hours to accomplish. Across all states, males are indeed leading the count for avoidable deaths. What is worrying is that there is an inverse correlation between median household income and avoidable deaths. The lower the income, the higher the death total is. This is seen really clearly with Northern Territory, a large and remote Australian Territory. An increase of $1,000 in the weekly median household income makes a huge difference here. The result set that Yellowfin used to create these automatic insights is available to use for further exploration. I can do that with a single click here, so let's do that now. Rather than starting from scratch, I have access to all components of the analysis, the data, the charts, and narratives that were automatically prepared for me, and I can perform further exploration here. Let's select the household income chart that we saw earlier. I am intrigued by this insight, so I'm going to filter it by Northern Territory. As we mentioned before, a large and remote Australian territory. I'm going to swap out the states with SA3 areas to find out which areas are affected the most. Now this tells me that Daily Tiwi West Arnhem 
Ace Arnhem, Barclay and Catherine have the highest avoidable debts whilst having the lowest household income. That suggests to me that maybe we should be focusing on SA3 areas rather than states. And what are the leading SA3 areas when it comes to avoidable deaths then? This now tells me a different story. Yes, Queensland and New South Wales states are in the mix, but the top 4 SA3 areas in total deaths here all come from the same territory, Northern Territory. With assisted insights helping me understand where to focus my analysis, we blended another data set to look into what causes people to visit a hospital in these same areas and if it can be prevented. So what are potentially preventable hospitalizations? These are hospitalizations that could have been prevented through preventative health interventions and early disease management from both primary and community-based care. When we plotted the top SA3 areas by total preventable hospitalizations, we found that when looking at chronic illnesses, nearly 50% of these areas appear in the same list for avoidable deaths. That could suggest that by reducing preventable hospitalizations in these areas, we can in turn save these people. So what are the top chronic conditions? We see that it's primarily heart diseases, congestive heart failure, iron deficiency anemia, diabetes, with chronic obstructive pulmonary disease being the leading cause of preventable hospitalizations. Knowing what to target, better recommendations can be made to build programs around these chronic illnesses. And thanks to Assisted Insights, we know from before that household income does affect total deaths. But does it affect preventable hospitalizations for leading chronic illnesses as well? Unfortunately, it does. The lower the income, the higher hospitalizations are for these chronic conditions, particularly around COPD. Quickly discovering what happened in the healthcare data and why has made a huge difference in insight generation and discovery. But it still takes some time and skill. What if we could automate this? This is why we have Yellowfin Signals. Yellowfin Signals runs all the time on the live healthcare data, constantly looking for changes. When a change is detected like an outlier, spike, or change in trend in any important metric, preventable hospitalizations in these cases, we get notified immediately. The amazing thing is that Signals has automatically found what we just discovered previously, that preventable hospitalizations are on the rise, caused by chronic cases, primarily COPD, and within certain SA3 areas in Northern Territory. Even if we didn't analyze this data at all, or did not have the time nor skill to do it thoroughly, Yelp and Signals scan the healthcare data at granular levels, finding these important insights for us. When signals are identified, Yellowfin notifies the relevant users via email, the mobile app, or a timeline notification. Relevant signals can also be alerted by placing a signal widget on a dashboard. When a signal notification is received, you can open it and explore the signal further to try and understand more about that change. Let's take a look at this signal around chronic cases being on the rise. It's showing me what's changed and the history of this particular metric slice. The correlated panel shows whether other similar changes happen in the same or other data sets at the same time. These help guide you to understand what may have happened. Here it tells me that there are similar increases in hospitalizations for a few SA3 areas in Northern Territory, and we recognize these areas from our previous chart on the dashboard showing the leading SA3 areas for chronic illnesses. We can then use the analysis tab here to find out what the possible drivers for this change were because Yellowfin has automatically analyzed the background data for us. Granted, we have some insights from our own visual exploration earlier, but let's see what we have here. Firstly, the automated analysis tells us that hospitalizations are coming from chronic conditions, mainly COPD and heart failure, and that they come from these SA3 areas, East Arnhem, Barclay, Daly, all from Northern Territory. Now, not only has Signals automatically discovered these changes and surfaced them to us, it has also explained the possible drivers with assisted insights. These are huge discoveries, so I'm going to share this with my colleague. There will be people within the business that will want these discoveries explained and interpreted for them. 
So to provide the context and explanation behind the rise of hospitalizations from chronic cases, I'm going to create a story. While we can add one or more signals into a story, we can start a story from scratch about anything in Yellowfin. Stories are a great way to change the way data flows into your organization with data storytelling. It comes in an engaging and familiar article-like format that allows me to provide a detailed, in-context explanation of what happened and why. Stories are a perfect example of augmented analytics. Signals automatically discover these insights and in turn, we can augment these insights with human context. In this case, folding in government research explaining that COPD is more common, about 2.5 times as high among certain demographics in these areas. And that existing health inequalities in lower socioeconomic areas do have an effect. Those SA3 areas in Northern Territory that we saw earlier with higher rates of COPD hospitalizations, we found additional research providing more validation, stating that it's three times higher compared to the national rate within these areas. And the most significant risk factor for COPD in these areas, cigarette smoking. Again, higher in regional and remote areas, particularly among people with socioeconomic disadvantages. Now, what is nuanced here is the undersupply and lack of access to healthcare professionals in these areas, causing high hospitalization rates in Northern Territory. You can see them here that they get themselves checked in very often, but they don't often stay for long. In fact, the Australian Journal of Pharmacy comments that high hospitalization rates and substantial variation reported for chronic diseases show that recommended care is not always provided for people with these conditions. Further investigations show that this is compounded by limited Medicare options, particularly bulk billing in Northern Territory. The lack of 24-hour clinics, increased out-of-pocket expenses for patients visiting GPs, all of this makes people in these areas go straight to the hospital. The data set doesn't know this, but we do. And sometimes what's important exists outside the data, but we can capture the context here. Providing clarity and context to all the stakeholders and getting the whole organization aligned on what the data means and what they need to do to resolve this. Now this is the power of a good story. In a short time, you saw how Yellowfin provided us the ability to understand the healthcare business better and being able to react to changes faster. You saw how you can automate and streamline many of your analytical processes assist business users with self-service reporting via guided data discovery, use Yellowfin signals to automate the entire data discovery process, automated analysis to get you to insights faster, and data storytelling to inform and inspire action in an organization. Yellowfin helps you transform your business through data.